flood protection secrets the podcast to the protection against heavy rain and flooding by dr flood andreas klippa so the big challenge is how can house owners like you and me get a flood free home how can business managers like you and me And how can public servants provide flood-free, critical infrastructure and livable cities? Flood Protection Secrets The podcast by Dr. Flood, Andreas Klippa This podcast is for foresighted and proactive people who do not want to shovel the muddy water out of their room while standing in the midst of the disaster. Therefore, those who design and plan, the architects and engineers need to construct such buildings and cities and that even when the entire environment is completely flooded. That is a challenge and this podcast will give the answers. Flood Protection Secrets The podcast by Dr. Flood, Andreas Klippe. Yeah, hello again. The 100-year rainfall bullshit. That is the title today. And uh, I call it Myths and Facts about Flood Protection. Um, yeah, we talk about statistics and nonsense and rainfall and uh, yeah, I'm so happy that you are here again because today it's a uh, it's a little bit uh, extraordinary what we are talking about and um, I want to bring you first in the world of the athletics. So um, one famous example in the sport of athletics, uh, track and field, um, with a men's mile run. And um, in 1954, uh, Roger Bannister, British middle distance runner became the first person to run a mile in under four minutes. Yeah, uh, achieving a time of three minutes and 59.4 seconds. I took a note about that. <laughs> This was uh, considered a monumental achievement and was once thought to be an insurmountable barrier. So that was a record and everybody thought at this time that is a record for eternity. But just 46 days later, On June 21, 1954, so 46 days later, an Australian runner, John Landy, broke Bannister's record with a time of 3 minutes and 57.9 seconds. So he also stayed um, below the, these uh, four minutes uh, and improved it by about, um, about um, two, two seconds. So Landy's um, feet highlighted the rapid progressive progression and uh, competitive nature of middle distance running during that era. So the back and forth between this banister and Landy captured the world's attention and demonstrated how quickly records can be surpassed in the world of sports and not only in the world of sports. And it, it's a fascinating example of uh, uh, athletic achievements and the pursuit of excellence. So that was a record uh, on the, uh, for, um, on the, uh, on the um, middle running distance and uh, yeah one runner Georgia Bannister beat the record be, st stood for um, uh, stood below four minutes and only 46 days later this eternal record was broken already I give you one more example and then you will understand what I was I want to express and what I want to say um, That leads us to the Guinness World Records. <laughs> the fastest time to solve a three times three times three Rubik's Cube. The Rubik's Cube. Uh, I think most of us have played with that. To be honest, I didn't play with that. I only played with that when I was already older. And uh, my son was playing with it. And then I tried to, to do it. I was not really good. But Felix, I hope I pronounced it well, Felix Semdex, um, in January 2022, an Australian speed tuber, he held the record for the fastest time to solve this uh, three times three times three uh, Rubik's Cube. He set the record on uh, May 6 in 2018 with an astonishing time of da, 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 four seconds 22. Can you imagine that? In four seconds 22? <laughs> I think I need four hours for that or four days. 
But this astonishing world record was broken already um, almost, uh, um, um, was it the same year? Yeah, that was half a year later, November 24 in 2018. Yu Sheng Du from China broke it, broke the record by solving the Rubik's Cube in just three seconds, 47 Wow, um, and uh, this broke Semdek's record by a significant margin. That was a, about half a half a second uh, di uh, um, difference. What is a lot? The rapid progression progression in the uh, Rubik's cube solving times is fascinating, and <laughs> competitions often see records broken and rebroken as cubers continuously refine their techniques and speed. Uh, um, it happens very often. It's a testament to the skill and dedication of speed cubers around the world. Wow, I did not know these things. Huh? Keep in mind that records in this category can change frequently due to the competitive nature of speed cubing. But you think when you establish such a world record, it will last for years at least. And that was even not half a year. Um, I give you one more example and that involves us... Uh, uh, involves the longest consecutive time playing a video game. <laughs> To keep, to keep it sharp, um, another gamer from Australia, I only have Australian guys here today, huh? uh, 2012, Okan Kaya uh, sets the record of playing Call of Duty, uh, Modern Warfare 3, to be honest, I don't know this game, perhaps some of you know it, uh, for 135 hours and 50 minutes. My goodness, that is really long. 135 hours. Um, the, this incredible feat attracted significant attention and was recognized by what? Uh, by Guinness World uh, Records. However, um, almost one year later, a Canadian gamer named Chad H, I don't, did not find the fa family name, uh, broke this record by playing Fallout and uh, in astonishing 138 hours uh, and 34 minutes. Fallout New Vegas is the name. Uh. So Chad's achievement surpassed Kaya's record and highlighted the determination and endurances, endurance of gamers in pursuit of such titles. That is really astonishing how these records are set up and broke, broken again in a very short time. So last time, <laughs> that is perhaps interesting for, for, for you. You know, I make every morning I do my, my, my sport, uh, my exercise, uh, but what I don't do anymore... Um, only from time to time, but not in the morning, is a handstand. And that is a record about the longest handstand. Um, Andriy Bondarenko from the Ukraine set the Guinness World Record for the longest handstand in 2019. Impressive 1 hour 35 minutes 31 seconds. And you, you know it already, only one year later in 2020, Andrei Kostash, also from the Ukraine, surpassed this uh, world record. And um, he, he, he made a handstand, <laughs> I cannot believe that, during three hours, 24 minutes and 33 seconds. So it's almost three times more, not really, but almost. Huh? So all these records that I have shown to you are made for eternity and then suddenly something happens and the, world, the records are broken. Now... What is a 100-year rainfall? So this is a rainfall that would dwarf all other rainfalls in its extent. If there was a ranking of heavy rainfall, the 100-year rainfall would always win and be in first place. Of course, uh, it's the strongest one. That, this was often the case in previous centuries. And interesting is that the next heavy rainfall was usually a little heavier than the previous one. Previous one. So a new champion was crowned each time. It is usually said that such a 100-year rainfall occurs exactly once in 100 years. However, this happens with devastating effects, excessive flooding and catastrophic, catastrophic devastation for the people living there. Um, my question to you now is, uh, yeah, <laughs> can such a 100-year rainfall occur Therefore, a second time within the 100 years? Here we are in the realm of statistics, which follows certain rules that are sometimes not so clear. Flood Protection Secrets 
the podcast to the protection against heavy rain and flooding by Dr. Flood Andreas Klippa. Yeah, here we are back again. Uh, so, uh, how about the statistics? Are these statistics then uh, still correct? Are the basic con conditions still the same? Climate change is dramatically affecting weather patterns around the world. I mean, we all know that from the news and the likelihood that the models simply no longer fit and are no longer correct will change such one on year rains. We will have to deal with increased rainfall in greater numbers. So it may well be that the 100 years will have to be reduced to 50, 20 or even 10 years. We should be prepared for that. Yeah, which are the consequences? Um, the good ones and the bad ones. If you trust the statistics, I have three consequences. Huh? Uh, I brought three for you today. If you trust the statistics, you might be flooded. That's what I explained before. Huh? Uh, B, if you trust the statistics, you might lose your house and inventory building. Uh, it can, if you are a business manager, then uh, you are perhaps more concerned uh, about your warehouse and your uh, manufacturing site and your offices and your basement parking. Uh, if you trust the statistics, you might lose all your savings, savings to clean up the mess, repair what is damaged and replace what was destroyed. And that is true for all business managers, public uh, servants and uh, homeowners. The only who are not concerned are the architects because they design these things, but they will design better, uh, better buildings uh, and infrastructure in the future. Uh, I'm quite sure about that. So, yeah, wh what is, which is the solution? Become independent from any statistic. Do your own exercise by preparing a protection against flooding. And do not allow statistics from weathermen to decide about the safety of your family, your employees and your properties. I repeat that. First, become independent from any statistic. These statistics are coming and going. The statistics are good to give you an impression. Uh, that is okay. That is a statistic about uh, will this politician uh, have, a ch have a chance to win the next election? Um, what is the probability? But it, it starts already. What is the probability of rainfall today? Just look to your weather app or listen to your weatherman at the radio station and then check out what they tell, tell you today. Perhaps it is 10%. What does it mean? Will it, will it rain? You, you can leave your umbrella at home. I think at 10%, I would leave my umbrella at home. But what if it is raining? Then I don't have an umbrella with me. Now the chance is 10%. In, in 10 days, it might rain one day. That is what this, this statistic tells. It doesn't tell you that within 10 hours, it will rain one hour. No, it is not what the statistics say. It say it might rain. It doesn't tell how long it will rain and how heavy the rain is. B, do your own exercise by preparing a protection against flooding. Uh, means prepare yourself by your own and uh, protect yourself by your own. Do your preparation by your own. Yeah, be prepared uh, in a way that you protect what is uh, important for you. You can bring your most valuable things to the upper floors in your house. That is one solution. You can park your car at the top of the hill in the neighborhood. But then you must bring your car to this top of the hill and must walk home. I don't know whether it is a good solution. And perhaps all these parking places are already taken by your neighbors. Who knows that? Huh? And to see the third solution, what I mentioned was, uh, do not allow statistics from weathermen to decide about the safety of your family. I mean, to be honest, uh, would, you, would you allow play your two-year-old two child um, at the ground floor in the living room and when outside uh, a flooding scenario will come through and heavy rain will flood the streets and then enter into your garden, enter through your main door into your living room? Will, will, you, will you let your two-year-old child play there while you go out? Uh, perhaps uh, just uh, normally you don't let the two-year-old child alone. Huh? That's, uh, that's the other thing. Uh, most probably not. Huh? So, 
the same for employees and the company, the same for properties in general, the same also for public uh, servants. Yeah, become independent from any statistic. I mentioned the three, uh, four, four examples. That was a, f a famous example in the sport of athletics, track and field with a, a men's mile run. This record established in 1954, Roger Bannister beaten by John Landy uh, just 46 days later. Um, the second example was from the fastest time to solve is three times three times three Rubik's Cube. Um, The record was at this time uh, in January 20, uh, May, um, yeah, 2022, sorry, uh, four seconds, uh, 2020, and um, uh, and that has been beaten immediately half a year later and is now at three seconds, 40, 47, perhaps it's already beaten again. And the other example was the longest consecutive time playing a video game. The record of uh, of 135 hours was beaten one year later in 2013, by 138 uh, hours um, uh, again, I think, was it 138? Yeah, it was beaten again. Uh, and then the longest handstand uh, was 1 hour 35 and beaten 20, uh, one year later by 3 hours 24 minutes. That means every record, every statistic, everything was beaten again. And you could not believe because the people believed it, it will last It will last for the next 100 years. How high is the risk that you will have 99 years of peace after the 100 year rainfall? How high is the risk that you will have 99 years of peace after the 100 year rainfall? If you would have asked the question to um, Roger Bannister, how long will your world record for this um, for the mile um, be uh, be accurate? Um, valid, he would have said for my whole life, but it was only 46 days. How long is the world record uh, valid for the Rubik's Cube with these ex astonishing 4 seconds 22? <laughs> it was just um, just half a year, almost half, half, half a year, and um, it was beaten again, the longest consecutive time playing a video game. This guy who played 135 hours, he was certainly thinking, hey, my goodness, hey, nobody else is able to do that and to beat me. But there was one guy beating him by, by 138 hours. So he, he played three hours more. And then the longest handstand. I mean, you make it one hour, 35 minutes. Eh? Imagine your arms, your muscles that must hold your body. You think this record is for eternity and then it was beaten again. So now heavy rain is coming, but the statistics tells you, the weatherman sitting in his nice radio studio tells you that is a 100 year rainfall. So what do you think? Well, the next 99 years, nothing to, uh, to be afraid about. Is that what you say? Ha, I have my doubts. I think I could explain a little bit what I want to express and you can take your own uh, uh, conclusion out of that. Yeah, let me end with um, with Winston Churchill, the legendary pr British Prime Minister who said, I only trust the statistics that I have falsified myself. I wish and hope for you that you make the right decisions when it comes to your personal flood protection. And if you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to this podcast channel if you haven't already. Now it only remains for me to wish you a good day. Do something with it. Maybe until the next podcast episode. I would be very happy. See you then. As always, stay safe and flood free. Your Andreas Klippe and the whole Flood Experts team. That's it again with the new episode of Flood Protection Secrets, the podcast by Dr. Flood, Andreas Klippi, German engineer, book author, and head of the Flood Experts. What can Dr. Flood, Andreas Klippi, protect for you? Anytime? Worldwide? Contact us? Or just click through to www.thefloodexperts.de slash bonus. Detailed engineering. German quality. Safe.
flood protection secrets. The secrets you'll want to unfold. Don't forget, you're only one flood barrier away. Subscribe to the season and you'll never be late for an episode.